Hello YouTube, Dave here again. Uh, I just wanted to do sort of a quick update video, just talk about a few different things uh, really quickly um, that I didn't want to spend uh, an individual video on for each of these subjects. Uh, so, just like I said, a few different things I want to kind of touch base on. So, number one, uh, I've had people, since I got my D&D Rule Cyclopedia, a lot of people have been recommending that I pick up the basic fantasy game. And um, so, something you can get is a free PDF, and I guess a print version is uh, pretty cheap as well. Um, so, for everyone who's been recommending that, uh, yes, I will be getting it, uh, I just don't know exactly when. Uh, there's a few other things that are sort of uh, that I'm interested in that I want to pick up first um, so but you know that is definitely something that is on my radar I want to have a little bit more time to get used to the rule cyclopedia before I start looking for alternatives to the rule cyclopedia but it is something that I definitely definitely want to pick up and it will be the print version because again trying to read PDFs on a computer screen really really kind of hurts my like I get headaches from it pretty quickly and um, you know I used to get migraines from reading off monitors for for too long so but it is something that is definitely um, something of interest to me uh, the next thing that I wanted to talk about um, were the um, my original plan like at the beginning of the year I wanted to go through and do D&D live streams of all of the uh, starter sets for uh, Dungeons and Dragons and uh, I got two sessions out of uh, out of the way for the adventure game that came for D&D 3.0 and I was running them using 3.5 rules but taking the adventures and the monsters that are in the adventures and just you know throwing them in uh, that way uh, I had a lot of fun running them I really really enjoyed them but there was just a lot of stuff that was going on uh, per in, in you know personal life uh, family life you know issues with with you know, I, I don't want to get into it, um, but there's just been so much kind of of the stuff going on that it's been really difficult to get the time to do these live streams. So at this point, I'm going to have to just say that I'm going to have to put them on the back burner. Um, I also completely misplaced my headset uh, that I was using, and I would like to have that um, because it, I, I don't want there to be like echoes of. Um, you know, people's voices coming through the speakers on the computer and then getting picked up by the microphone. I've had that issue in some other, um, just like hangouts and stuff like that before. So it's one of those things that if, you know, when I find that, um, and maybe during the summer, I'd like to try to get that up and running again. I don't know if I'm going to be able to go through all of those, um, all of those sets. Uh, also trying to set up and, and do it for the miniatures is a little bit more difficult than I thought it was going to be. Um, I think probably the best thing to do would be to actually have the camera um, directly in front of me and point it down uh, when they're going through the maps just because that way um, the camera is looking at the same directions that I am instead of it being like mirrored or just kind of screwed around. So anyway, but that is one of those things that I, I feel terrible about. But, you know, family stuff uh, is going to come first every single time uh, over anything else. So it's just one of those things that, you know, I, I am sorry, but it just kind of got away from it. It's been difficult to get back into it. So hopefully during the summer, we'll, we'll see. Uh, <clears throat> the other, another thing that I've had people ask me is what do I plan on doing with my Unearthed Arcana book that I got. Um, a lot of people suggesting that I do giveaways for it. And uh, something that is definitely a strong consideration for me, uh, the biggest thing is just, you know, the money uh, to do the giveaways, uh, because shipping stuff isn't necessarily, isn't necessarily the cheapest thing in the world. Um, so, especially because I would want to have it boxed up and wrapped up and, you know, properly protected, and, you know, shipping is based off of weight and by the size of the, of the product, so it's one of those things that, you know, I'm definitely considering. Uh, the other thing why I'm a bit hesitant to do it right now is because I actually want to run uh, a first edition AD&D adventure at some point in the very near future. Now, it's probably be like a local game. It's not going to necessarily be like an online or live stream or anything like that. But um, if I do, I'd like to have that copy of the Under Threat available in case anyone wants to use it. Because I'm a little bit concerned that if I start using my original copy too much that the binding may go and pages may come out similar to what happened with the Oriental Adventures because both of those books have, uh, from what I understand, similar issues. So it's one of those things that right now, uh, it's still in my collection 
and I'm hoping to be able to get some use out of it before I uh, potentially do a giveaway. Um, so we'll see what happens. Now um, I do, st I'm, I am still waiting on the replacement book that was sent to me by DriveThruRPG after I received that rule cyclopedia because it got it actually got shipped out <laughs> the same day that my original package from way back in February was found by Canada Post and delivered to me. So um, as far as that goes, um, so if I end up getting a second copy of Unearthed Arcana, I will be doing a giveaway for that right away. And if it's a second copy of the Rule Cyclopedia, I might be doing a giveaway for that uh, as well. We'll kind of see what happens there. Uh, it just depends on what I end up getting. Uh, and I guess that's, I don't know if I can think of too many other things that I actually want to, oh, uh, yeah, there's actually one last thing. Um, I've had people ask me if I'm planning on getting the Into the Borderlands book, um, by Goodman Games. And when it was first announced, I absolutely wanted to get it 100%, but as time has gone on, it's become a bit more difficult to say yes to that. And there's a couple different reasons. The biggest reason is the price. Um, right now I'm trying to, my, uh, the, the owner of Giant Robot Comics is trying to get in touch with his distributor to find out what the cost to him is actually going to be, because it's listed as $50 US, and it's a 300, it's over 300 pages, um, in this book, which is really kind of crazy, because what it is, is it's just, you know, B1 and B2, which I'm pretty sure were like 32 page books, and even if they fully update them for you know, 5th edition, I was expecting it might be around like 170 pages, 175, 179, like 180, around that mark with some of like the essays and stuff thrown in there, but it's over 300 pages, so $50 US, converted to Canadian, after taxes, because we had 15% uh, sales tax here in Nova Scotia, uh, it's looking at, if it's that price, it's probably going to be around 75 to $77, which is uh, a lot. Um, that's more than I feel comfortable paying for it, uh, and the reason for that is there's another similarly priced RPG book that I kind of want to get first, and that is the Dragon Age uh, core book for um, Green Ronin. Uh, so I have sets one and two of the original release of the RPG. Uh, I also have the Dungeon or the Game Master's kit and the Blood and Ferelden adventure book. Uh, so sets one and two came out were readily available. Uh, set three, on the other hand, uh, was very, very limited release. Um, very small production run as far as I understand. And none of the game stores in my province have even said that they were ever able to order it. Uh, I think they had some that they originally, when it was first announced, they put some pre-orders in for, and they just never got them. Um, so it's something that was very difficult to come by. Set 1 is levels 1 through 5 of character progression, set 2 is 6 through 10, and set 3 was going to be uh, 11 through 20. And so right now I've only got half the role-playing game, and it's been that way for years. So um, I'm hoping to get the Dragon Age RPG first. Uh, the other reason that I'm sort of iffy on getting into the Borderlands or not, uh, it's not that I don't think it's a fantastic product, because I think it is absolutely amazing, and I would love to see them be successful, and I would love to see them continue to release stuff along these lines. I don't think they need to make 300-page books for every single one. You know, I think a lot of people would be happy with them just having the original version, the 5th edition D&D updated version and maybe like 15 to 20 pages of just, you know, maybe some uh, historical notes or essays about people's experiences or getting the developers to sort of give their commentary on it. Um, so I'm hoping that they're not all going to be like these big massive behemoths of books. But um, I have B2 already. Um, so I have Keep on the Borderlands and honestly, if I was going to run Keep on the Borderlands, I would you run it using my rule cyclopedia. Uh, I would want to run it for the rule set that it most closely matches. Um, and running for 5th edition, you know, I've got all kinds of other 5th edition adventures that I can be running. I don't, well, I guess they're over here. Uh, I don't really need necessarily to have that one for 5th edition. And honestly, the, you know, using those older low-level modules for, you know, 5th edition isn't going to be that difficult uh, to convert. The biggest thing, the biggest hassle in conversion, 
would just be setting like DCs for traps or things along those lines because low level monsters in D&D are low level monsters pretty much throughout every single edition. So having, you know, go goblins and kobolds and, you know, stuff like that, you know, that's going to translate well anyway. And then the other big holy crap monsters that you would run into, like the ogre, the minotaur, and I think there was an owl bear. Those are meant to be like an oh crap moment. So, you know, they're meant to be powerful. You know, the idea was that the characters would, if they get them over their heads, they would flee. You know, not expect that they should be able to reasonably, you know, defeat every single thing that they come across. So anyway, so there's that. Uh, and I also have um, coming to me uh, a print-on-demand copy of B1 in Search of the Unknown. So for that one, I used the store credit that was given to me by um, DriveThruRPG for all the issues that kind of surrounded my uh, rule cyclopedia, uh, you know, the fiasco of having the, the book order from back in February just go completely missing, uh, and then the replacement copy being the wrong book, um, and just all these different things. So uh, it's just one of those things that, um, you know, they gave me the credit. You know, they didn't have to. I wasn't really asking for it. I was just saying, you know, I am kind of getting a bit frustrated, and I was hoping that they could change the shipping method, or there's just something that they could do. Uh, to ensure that I got the right thing and but they gave me the credit and I used the credit to order B1 because I had a print on demand and it cost me zero dollars uh, I paid nothing for it uh, the credit that they gave me covered the printing and the shipping which was like seven or eight dollars I think for the shipping uh, so it covered all of that and I have a little smidge of stuff left over not you know it's like a dollar or something but so I got that for free and it's on its way to me because at the time I didn't think I would be able to get it at all uh, the into the borderlands um, so the the only reason that I might be able to get it is again if uh, the the game store owner talks to his distributor and if the price that it's gonna cost him is the same uh, then it would only retail for around fifty dollars for here so if that's the case then I'm definitely gonna get it but I don't think that's gonna end up being the way that it is so unfortunately that one's just not the big priority for me uh, oh, there is yeah, the last thing, uh, and I know I said that before, but there is one last thing that I want to discuss, and that is some mistakes that I made in my Barbarian creation video from yesterday. So, I, there, there a couple things were pointed out to me, and there was one thing that I noticed right away that nobody else has mentioned yet, but I'm going to call myself out on it because, you know, I made the mistake and I'm going to own it. So the first thing is backgrounds. Uh, the background information... I, I'm a DM, like 100% of the time, uh, so when it comes to, you know, a lot of the player stuff, I skim through it, but I don't necessarily spend a lot of time reading everything in thorough detail, because I expect, I usually play with veteran players, so I expect the players to know their stuff about their character. Um, but what I fail to realize is that you actually do roll two, uh, two times, or you don't roll two times, well you can, but you choose two personality traits. And I always assumed that, because you chose one for everything else, that you just chose one of those traits. And, um, you know, looking at the ready-made characters, it's obvious that they had two personality traits, but instead of just having them listed separately, they have the word and in there, and it joins it all together, which to me just felt like one thing. And um, anyway, so I, I messed up on that. Uh, so going forward, all the other remaining characters are going to have two personality traits, so that's going to be taken care of. <clears throat> I also screwed up on the javelin. So for me, when I think of a javelin, I think of like the Olympic throwing, you know, event with, you know, like the javelin toss and, um, you know, trying to actually hit things with accuracy. Uh, for me, javelins have always been a ranged weapon and I wouldn't even question it. Um, it's just the way that they've always been presented. Um, I've never seen any, you know, NPC, monster, villain tactic, nothing in any of the D&D adventures that I've read or, you know, uh, that I've run or anything where a javelin is used as anything other than a ranged attack. So, uh, and I feel like an idiot because I was showing, like, the javelins listed right underneath the hand axe and those are listed under simple melee weapons. And I actually did a little bit of research, so, you know, they're, like, I guess it's sort of the idea, I guess, must be based off of the Roman javelins. 
that were sort of used as both a melee weapon and a ranged weapon. And, you know, they would basically use it if they were forming ranks, they would use it like a spear, and, uh, but otherwise, if they use it as a ranged attack, then they would fall back to, like, a, you know, uh, a different weapon. So, but I just, it, to me, it had always been a ranged weapon. Like, you know, any monster that I've seen that had tactics listed that had javelins was round one, you know, if at range, throw javelin. And that was it. It was always that. So I just naturally assumed, because I'm used to javelins being nothing but a ranged weapon, that they use their dexterity. And they don't. They use strength. Um, because they are listed under the melee weapons in the player's handbook, and they don't have the finesse property. So for thrown, if you if it's a melee weapon, then you use whatever ability score modifier you would use for your melee attacks. So strength, for the most part, like the throwing axes, um, or the hand axes, sorry, uh, would be uh, strength. Um, throwing hammers would be <clears throat> like the light hammers would be strength. You know, you know so you can throw them and anyway. Uh, and the dagger was provided as an example of being able to choose because it has finesse. So you can either use it as strength or dexterity, whichever is better. But the javelin just has the thrown property and it's listed under melee weapons, so it should have been a plus five bonus to hit uh, with the javelin instead of um, plus three. So I use the dexterity when I shouldn't have, and it's just basically my old school mentality, um, just, you know, making the assumptions on how these weapons work based off of how they've always worked in any game that I've ever run before. So that was a big mistake that I made there. Uh, the last thing, and the one I'm going to call myself out on, is I didn't choose an alignment for my character. And I realized that, like, I already had the video uploaded, not, not uploaded on YouTube, but I had it um, uploading on uh, Movie Maker, and it was uh, in the process of rendering, and I was going to go back and get the thumbnail. Uh, because all of my thumbnails are pictures that I take and then just kind of, you know, crop and modify to the point where they are small enough to be used as a thumbnail. But I don't use, like, Google Image Search. I don't do anything like that. They're all ones that I create myself. Because, I, I don't know, I, this is one of those things that, you know, I don't have a lot of fancy editing skills or computer skills or anything like that. But, you know, the least I can do is at least make my own thumbnails. So, anyway, I go back. And the idea was that I was going to have the miniature on the sheet because I want, I want to do that. And uh, so I had the miniature on the sheet, and I looked down, and because um, I just wanted to have it around like the name and all those sort of information, and there was a blank spot with the alignment. I was like, uh, you know, I didn't want to go back because uh, it was already a long video uh, because you know there's a lot of stuff that I kind of had to explain where this was the beginning of the the series. Um, I just didn't want to go back and say, oh, I forgot the alignment, so here's what it is because that's just anyway. And I definitely wasn't going to re-record the whole thing. Uh, so I just, like, when I made the thumbnail, uh, I don't know if anyone noticed, but I actually placed the miniature over the alignment section, uh, so that it looked like, you know, if I just did, like, the CG or, you know, uh, CN or NG, you know, just, like, the initials for, like, neutral good, chaotic good, any of that stuff that, you know, it's just, oh, the miniature's just covering, but it's like, no, I, I forgot. <laughs> I completely forgot to fill that in, uh, or discuss it at all, so that I'll be doing that with the Bard video. Uh, and it was a little bit of, like, subterfuge on my point to just have the miniature over the spot that I missed. Um, but anyway, so nobody noticed that or nobody said anything about it in the comments yet at the time that I'm recording this. But you know what? I made a mistake and I'm going to own it. Uh, so I forgot to choose their alignment and I will do that next time. Along with making sure that I read the weapon charts, you know, properly <laughs> and understand them. And, uh, not that I didn't understand it, it's just, again, I had my preconceived notions, um, that just trumped everything else. And, uh, but I will definitely make sure to, uh, to do the proper, uh, thing with personality. So, anyway, thank you guys very much for watching. Uh, like I said, just a few rapid-fire things I just wanted to get out of the way. Uh, I had a bit of, I've actually been dealing with a migraine pretty much all day, so this is the sixth try to make this video, and I'm happy with it, so I'm gonna just get it out there now. But, again, thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and, uh, we'll see you next time. Take care.